So the, the topic today has to do with organic fertility management for organic blueberries. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that the information I have here is a, it's relevant across the board uh, because you can plug in uh, whether you're certified organic or you're uh, a grower in adopting sustainable practices. There's a lot of different ways that you can plug into this and, and make your plants uh, and, and your crops really thrifty. And that's the thing I've learned about blueberries is it, they're, they really, you really want to get them thriving. That's the key to blueberries. Okay, just a quick background on what I'm doing. My, my quick background on what I've done is I started off as an extension horticulture agent in Muskogee County, Oklahoma. Also did an ag agent work in McIntosh County, Oklahoma. And then the district horticulturist, I did some work uh, for 21 counties in northeast Oklahoma for a short period. And then uh, I managed an organic, uh, certified organic blueberry farm in the Missouri Ozarks in 1988. Uh, and was working with the blue, organic blueberry growers there at that time. That's how I got started. So uh, I found out that I really wanted to get out of the office and work and see what works. That's the key thing, what works. So, uh, and then I've managed farms in Arkansas and here in Kentucky. Uh, after working in Missouri, I went down to Arkansas and to work with the ATRA, National Sustainable Agriculture Information Service. Uh, it was uh, kind of... Uh, Ancillary to the Extension Service, it's, it's uh, operated by a nonprofit organization. It receives a grant from USDA to provide information on sustainable agriculture to farmers and extension agents in all 50 states. So I did that for 18 years and again worked with farmers in all 50 states, all kinds of crops, all kinds of questions. And the way that works is they would call and talk to us and say, hey, I'm, I want to grow. Uh, soybeans in, in Nebraska, I want to do it organic or without herbicides, what, what can I do? What, what are the techniques? And we would dig through all kinds of old USDA literature, agriculture experimentation bulletins, and get really the great farmer techniques. It's how do you use a lister and how to use a rotary hoe and a and uh, tine weeder to control weeds, the timing, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I did a lot on organic fruit and vegetable production, uh, a lot on on alternative soil testing laboratories, compost, compost teas. And then uh, in the process of that learning about all this, it, I, I adapted the concept and embraced the concept of soil health uh, and also uh, the healthy soil equal healthy crops equal healthy food. And then the other concept was uh, this uh, uh, alternative farming system known as eco-agriculture or eco-farming. And that is kind of an advanced form of organic farming uh, it's not strictly organic. It uses a little, it's a combination of both conventional and organic, but uh, it, it uh, pays attention to the minerals and biology of the soil and also the physics. They use a lot of instruments to measure things like EC, electrical conductivity, uh, and just use a lot of uh, applied uh, and advanced techniques to really promote a really healthy soil, a really healthy crop. Uh, and then I did some work uh, following uh, that as a in the private industry as a consultant in Texas. Um, worked with a lot of different farms and government agencies. I did a lot of soil testing and um, so forth. So I thought that would be interesting, a quick, quick background. And so uh, as a segue, in, in the, there is a history of production of organic blueberries in the Ozarks. And uh, it started with uh, Dr. James Moore at the University of Arkansas. He was, uh, he was from Arkansas. He went to Rutgers University, studied plant breeding. He worked for USDA for some years. And in, in the, in the mid-1960s, he came back to Arkansas and he was, uh, did a uh, breeding in strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, uh, peaches. And was, he was a famous horticulturist and really impact, impacted everything that people do in small fruits. He, was, he had a big impact on. Uh, the Cardinal Strawberry, for example, is a release from Arkansas from his work. Uh, but in the, in the late 1970s, around 1977-78, he introduced high bush blueberries to the Missouri, uh, to the Ozarks, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Uh, and by the way, guess what? It is unbelievably similar to Metcalf County. The, the Ozark conditions and the scenery, the whole thing, karst topography, 
underlaid by, underlaid by limestone, highly weathered soils that are now uh, low, low levels of fertility and, and becoming more acidic, uh, fescue pastures, pH is dropping down to 5.5 and, and below and so forth. Uh, so really similar conditions. But uh, the, the high bush blueberry production system, uh, uh, raised, raised bed berm, wood chip mulch, sawdust mulch, drip irrigation, good fertility practices, good weed control, and, and, and paying attention to the soil pH and, and, uh, and then varieties. So the varieties that, were, uh, that really pushed that industry were blue crop, blue ray, blue jay, uh, Collins and Ed, Elliot. Uh, so, uh, and, and in fact, that's, that's what I plugged into, although I, I went with uh, an organic system because that's the farm I was managing, I uh, was doing. So, uh, the other thing is there was uh, from the early 1980s to the late 1990s was a, an, a growers organization, UGA, Ozark Organic Growers Association, and it had a cooperative warehouse that uh, pooled the berries and, and uh, sold them into the wholesale chain. And Arkansas had a real interesting marketing window. The, the crop came in at a certain time before, for example, the New Jersey crop or the Michigan crop. And they got a really good price per flat. And so this, this industry really took off for years. A lot of growers did this and, and made a living. Uh, they did educational meetings, field days. They had a newsletter. They did organic certification. And I'm talking about, I was doing this in 1988, long before USDA was involved in certification. There was already uh, certification happening amongst the different states by these private growers associations. And so, um, and an interesting thing in that time when they came and did the certification, they would also provide consultation. So it was kind of farmer to farmer exchange. Uh, and uh, however, that changed when uh, USDA got involved, they said you cannot provide consultation at the time you're doing certification. Uh, but um, there was all these different groups. Arkansas had a group, California had one, Oregon, uh, North Carolina, you know, all of Vermont, uh, you know, New Jersey, they all had different groups. And in fact, the reason that the USDA National Organic Program came into existence is because some groups had slightly varying uh, guidelines and standards uh, and so they tried to uh, they, they thought it would be really beneficial to to mer merge all those together into a national program so that's how that came about but just a reminder that organic production and certification was totally on the ground and working years and years and years before USDA got involved so it's not new and plenty to learn from so as an example this is the uh, uh, publication from Atra that myself and another guy who worked with me, another specialist who also did organic production of blueberries, we put this publication together. I think we first published that in 1995 and uh, I think it was last revised in 2004. Uh, they just don't have enough staff to keep up with this. But uh, So there is some uh, good information on, in there. It's online. It reviews some of the practices that we did, uh, for example, in Arkansas. Uh, Missouri, Oklahoma, peat moss in the planting hole, feather meal, cottonseed meal, foliar feeding, a lot of those things that you can, you can use in organic production. So um, in, the, in the more modern context, Cornell has a really excellent um, uh, publication, which is a guide to organic blueberry production that I highly recommend uh, if you want to plug into this uh, and find out more. It's a more up-to-date, more thorough, uh, it's published by the Extension Service, so they have more resources to put into it. It's, it's very good. So um, now some features of organic agriculture I think might be helpful. Is one is that uh, it really is um, a couple things that help put in perspective is that, uh, for one, it's designing an agroecosystem to mimic nature. So copy, understand, comprehend, and copy nature is the concept. Mimicking nature and let nature do the work for you. Uh, it's based on uh, natural versus synthetic inputs for soil fertility and pest control, especially the certified organic production. Uh, there's an old term called humus farming that, is, that if you go back in the literature, it really speaks to what this is really about. 
because when you manage the soil for organic matter, you build the humus in the soil, you're really promoting a healthy soil food web, and then therefore you get this sort of slow release of nutrients over time. And for example, if you're using compost, um, you can get an excellent crop, doesn't matter what crop it is, soybeans, corn, fruits, or whatever, you can get excellent crops from using compost and that, that slow release nutrients. Um, I'd say it's really old and new expert farmer techniques. And in addition, I want to point out that, that USDA organic is not the only kind of alternative farming systems that farmers use, study, and, and employ. And there's a number of these that you can, there's variations on a theme. For example, sustainable agriculture is, is pretty widely known now. But agroecology is practiced on a worldwide basis. Biodynamic farming is a, a, a system that came out of Europe and it predates organic by like eight, eight decades. Uh, nature farming is popular in Asia and Central America. They have these great recipes for making microbial inoculants on the farm. Do it yourself, low cost. Eco-agriculture I mentioned, it's like advanced organic, a real, real uh, sophisticated approach. Permaculture, uh, and then regrarian is the new one, and, that, and a lot of people are integrating uh, water management on the farm with swales to get the water to soak in, plus holistic grazing, really, really improving the soil health using this integrated approach.